broken. The original Hebrew, when he, when he says their eyes broken, literally translates, they began to consider and to think about good and evil. That's the literal translation. Their eyes were open. They began to consider. How many considered or thought about good and evil this week? <laughs> right? You know why? Because your eyes were Right? That was never God's will. That literally was against the will of God. But it's become, when you look at the world we live in, it's hard not to consider good and evil. It's hard not to consider good and evil in your own world, your own life. When the carnal eyes are open, the spiritual awareness is blind. This is a truth that lasts forever. When the carnal eyes are open, spiritual awareness is blind. And what is the result? Look at Genesis 3 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. This is the result when all of a sudden they were aware of good and evil, when they began to consider good and evil, they heard the voice walking. Remember in John chapter 1, John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. How many remember that? Mm -hmm. How many understand that the word and the voice are the same person? How many think that's just absolutely amazing? Yeah. The voice is the tree of life. Did you consider that? The voice is literally the tree of life. They heard the voice from the tree of life, the tree of life walking. They heard the voice, the voice is wisdom. The voice is grace, divine influence. The spirit of grace. How many understand it's the spirit of grace that's living in that? The spirit of grace, the spirit of divine influence. The voice Paul said is rendered ineffective by our awareness of good and evil. It's rendered ineffective. It happened in the garden. It happened in the Old Testament wilderness. And it happened again in the New Testament wilderness. In fact, let's look at what Paul wrote again in 2 Corinthians 3 6. Who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Paul said that we are called to the ministry of the New Testament. How many hear the words New Testament and you immediately think Matthew through Revelation? Yeah. How many know it's hard to not think that? Right? You've been taught that the New Testament was books in the Bible. Yeah. Matthew through Revelation, New Testament. You think all the combined books after the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, Kahinos Diatheke. That's what he said. Kahinos Diatheke. You know what it translates? New contract, new covenant, new will. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. He said, You're ministers of a new contract, a new covenant. You're ministers of the new will. Yes. He was literally saying, we are called to teach men that there is a new and living way of communication between God and man. Yes. That's what we were called to. We're called to teach people that this can be an actual personal relationship, a real relationship with true fellowship, communication, where ideas are expressed between us. Thoughts and feelings expressed not just from me to God, but from God to me. Don't you want that? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Isn't that what we've always longed for? Isn't that why you joined the team? Right? It wasn't just so you didn't go to hell. You joined the team because you wanted to be intimate. You wanted intimate contact with the coach. You wanted one-on-one. -on -one.
We're called to teach messengers a new and living way. And then he says, not merely through what is written. That's what he's saying. He's saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but it's not merely through what is written. That's what Paul said. He said, because what was the way that was written was the old way. Is it true? Right? Carol said God was so angry, he just wrote him a letter of divorce. He said, here. Take it. Here's your rules. Take them. And that's what he did for the Old Testament. Then every once in a while, there would be a prophet that would come up that would actually hear God and hear his heart. But all the people, they didn't know him. He was just God. He was somebody to be afraid of. Somebody that would punish you if you were bad. How many have ever thought you did something bad and you thought, God's going to punish me? <laughs> right? Right? This, or how many have ever had something happen and you said, God must be punishing me? Or you ever got sick and you went, what did I do? Right? You know why? Because that same mentality came from the Old Testament. It didn't come from the new way, the new contract. It didn't come from there. It didn't come from grace. It came from the law. The law's impersonal. You're bad, you're punished. Right? That's the God we were taught to in church. Still this angry God that's just waiting. <laughs> right to the moon, Alice, right? The new way between God and man is not letters to be read, but a voice to be heard. Praise God, yes. You want to hear his voice? Yeah. And you can. That's what he's teaching the church in the last day. He wants you to hear his voice. Yeah. Remember what Jesus himself said in John 16. I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he won't speak of himself, but whatever he hears, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it to you. How many of you know what this means? Jesus is here explaining the new way to his disciples. This is really cool. He said the new way is the spirit of truth that would guide men into all truth. How many of you didn't have a Bible you know very little about God? No. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. It's terrible. It's almost been a crotch. I love, I love the scriptures. I, Carol said, make sure you tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> My mother gave me a one-year Bible in 1991. Next year, I will have read through that Bible 31 times, or 30 times. And that's, that's just part of what I do in searching. But I, that's not my crutch. I'm using, the, it's the roadmap that I'm trying to find him by. That's, that's not my God. That's not who he is. I need the voice. I can't just have the words. I need the voice. I've got to be guided by truth. The spirit of truth is my GPS. He takes me into the heart of God and shows me the way God thinks and the way he feels. But I'm still on a path because I want it to be one-on-one -on -one communication where he's telling me what he's going to do next. See, I haven't arrived at that point yet. That's my desperate heart. I want to know what he wants to do. What do you think about this, son? What do you think? And Moses would say, God, I don't, I don't think you ought to do that. I don't think you ought to kill them all. I know they're idiots. I hate them too. <laughs> but I don't think you ought to kill them because the enemies are going to blame you for tricking them into just getting them in the wilderness to kill them. And God goes, oh, maybe you're right. <laughs> right, didn't he? And the Bible says that God would repent. 
What an awesome relationship, though. How many know that's so beautiful? Isn't that what we want? What a beautiful relationship. Jesus is explaining this new way to his disciples. That the way of the spirit of truth would guide men into all truth. And that's what he says. All truth literally is ever increasing truth. All truth. Not just what you were taught in the 70s or the 80s or the 90s. Or even in the beginning of this, this new land. It's ever increasing daily. Seeking for ever to hear ever increasing truth. So what happened? Exactly the same thing that happened in the Old Testament. Men said, let God speak to Moses, and we will read what Moses writes down, and then we'll obey that. The New Testament church said, let God speak to Paul. He'll write it down, we'll read it, and we'll do what he said. You can't call me a liar. It's true. I love Paul's writings. He had such deep... But it didn't stop with Paul. How many understand? It didn't stop. It wasn't supposed to stop. It was supposed to be personal. Not just for Paul, but for you. You get that, right? So then we read Paul's writings and we obey them. So what happened to the voice? What happened to the voice? Oh, we have it out in the writings. What happened to the voice? It was dismissed as unnecessary. And the church began to die spiritually. So without the voice to guide her into all truth, the church has blindly been led into polluted information and contaminated knowledge which is completely devoid of spiritual understanding. So we ended up with a church that looks good but it's powerless. White and sepulchers filled with dead bones. Like the Pharisees of Jesus' day, we have studied and memorize scripture until we become proud and confident and divisive. All we can do now is argue about scripture. The voice is uncontaminated. The voice speaks truth. You can't argue with the voice. Look what Jesus told those who study the scriptures in Luke 11. I know what to And he said, woe to you, Lawyers are those who study the law, study scripture. For you lay men with burdens grievous to be born, but you yourself don't touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you. You build sacrifices of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly you bear witness that you allowed the deeds of your fathers. For they indeed killed them, and you build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets apostles, and some of them must slay and persecute. That the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias which perished between the altar and the temple, verily I say to you, it should be required of this generation. Woe unto you, lawyers! You have taken away the key of knowledge. You enter not in yourselves, and them that were entering in you this is such a powerful verse, such a powerful scripture. Right beside this in, in, in my Bible, this scripture, in my Bible, in the margin of my Bible, it says legalism. Back in the 70s and 80s, there was a lot of preaching about legalism. We heard a lot about it, legalism. In a nutshell, legalism is the practice of salvation through good works. We also refer to that as religion. Look what Jesus said. Well, and you lawyers, you've taken away the key of knowledge. You didn't enter in yourselves, and then that we're entering in you hindered. The key of knowledge. He said, you've taken away the key of knowledge. It's the key that unlocks revelation knowledge. It's the key to awareness. 
perception and understanding. What is the key of spiritual knowledge and wisdom being continually increased in the church? It's the voice. You've taken away the voice. That's what he said. He said you took away the voice. He said it didn't matter anymore. You had the words in front of you to study. And because of that, you took away the voice. And the voice is the key to awareness, the key to perception, the key to truth, the key to revelation knowledge, the key to understanding. Jesus said that the voice is taken away by the Pharisee spirit in every generation. Every generation has a spirit of the Pharisee. And that, that uh, strength in every generation, that power in every generation, of that spirit removes the voice. He said it's taken away. It literally means completely removed. It's a Greek word. A reho means completely removed. How do, relig how do religions remove the one and only key to understanding? How do the religious remove the one and only key to understanding? Jesus said this, you kill the prophets. You kill those who hear and preach what God is saying. He said that the religious refuse to enter the kingdom and will fight to keep every generation from entering also. We are on the verge in this generation of a paradigm shift. He said it twice in Joel 2 and in Acts 2. And I'm going to pour out my spirit. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. You know what? He wasn't talking about, he wasn't talking about uh, the world. He was talking about the flesh of the church. Shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, <clears throat> that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. They will say what God's saying. He said, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I believe that the prophetic spirit of God is coming back to this generation. I believe that the voice is returning to our generation. I believe we're going to see an uprising in the spirit realm. I think both sides. I think the wicked are going to get wickeder. But I think that they used to say the good are going to get gooder, but it's not going to be that. I think the people who claim to be spiritual are going to become truly spiritual. Because God's going to, as a gift, because grace is for, as God's going to give it as a gift. He said, behold, it's going to come to pass because the church has missed it. And that spirit has taken the voice away generationally, after generation, after generation. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. There's nothing that the religious spirit's going to be able to do about it. I'm going to pour it out on all flesh. He said, and then you're going to see your sons and your daughters begin to prophesy. Servants and handmaids are going to begin to prophesy. They're going to begin to hear the heart of God. They're going to begin to fellowship with God, communicate with God. And speak the voice of God. Don't you want to speak what God's saying? Mm -hmm. I love that God, what he said. It's great what he said. I want to say what he said. Yeah. I want to hear it. I want to experience it. I want to be part of that. I want to belong to that movement. The religious have fought tooth and nail 
to desperately keep the voice from ever being heard. They're going to persecute your children for being prophets. But there's a great reward for the persecuting prophets. We need to learn to sit in the presence of God without any agenda. We need to learn to sit in his presence and listen for the voice to come walking back into the garden. He's longing, it's the tree of life, he's wisdom. He's longing to speak to his church again. Yes. He's longing for someone that can hear him again. Someone whose ears aren't clouded by self and sin and religion. Someone who's willing that all barriers be broken down. And receive from the voice himself. Amen. Stand with me. Praise Father, we worship you. It's your voice we want to hear. Yes. It's your voice we long to know. Let the spirit of truth come. Let the spirit of truth come and speak to our spirit that we might have true fellowship with the Father. We want to be part of that great army that hears the voice of our leader, of our commander, of our savior, of our king. We want to hear that voice. We want every other voice to be blotted out. We want them to be blocked. We want the voice of religion to be blocked. We don't want to hear the voice of religion anymore. Yeah. We don't want to hear the voice of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil anymore. We only want to hear the voice that speaks truth and wisdom and life 